For practice exercise 5.2 GCD, which stands for greatest common denominator, we need to write a method named greatest common denominator, and it's going to accept two integers as a parameter and return the greatest common divisor of the two numbers. So what this is saying is we need a method. We're going to make it public. We'll just call it static. It's returning an integer. And then our name for the method is going to be GCD. And then we're taking two parameters. So we're going to have ints. And we're just going to stick with the convention a and int b that we have here. So this is our header. And now we can write in our method. I'm going to kind of piece together this method because it's not too big, but there's a lot of different parts inside of it. So the very last thing, well, it's important to actually read the instructions. The instructions say one efficient way to compute the GCD of two numbers is to use the algorithm that we are given here. In kind of English, it says if we repeatedly modify a by b, then swap the two values, eventually b will store zero and a will store the greatest common divisor. So if a is going to store the greatest common divisor, and that's what we want to return, we know we are going to have to return a at the end of this method. Now, we're going to do this until b is zero. Eventually b will store zero. And we can see that even in the example over here, GCD a and zero, um, it stops and returns the absolute value of a. So what we can have in here is a while loop. And this while loop is going to run as long as our b does not equal to zero. Otherwise, it's just going to break out and return. So now we are going to be inside of our while loop. Inside of our while loop, there's a few things that we need to do. So we need to repeatedly modify our a by b. And what this is saying is if we write this in here, mod a by b, we are going to do the following. We're just going to set a equal to b. That's really all modifying a by b is saying. Now, b is eventually going to be at zero, right? And we are going to look at this for guidance. So b is what we're changing. We're going to set our b equal, and we want to take the a modulus of b. Very simple. So we'll do a modulus of b. And what is this doing? This is because a, or I'm sorry, eventually b will store zero, and a will store the greatest common divisor. So we can just copy this and paste this as a comment right here, because that's what we're doing here. And that's a problem, because when we have this a down here, it's basically just going to be b modulus b. So what we can do instead is make a value that's going to look at our a. So we'll call this, we'll say value that stores, stores a. And we'll just say int uppercase a is equal to lowercase a. And then we are going to have our uppercase a inside of here. So that is just putting a into here. So we don't accidentally have our b modulus b because we don't want that. Every single time we run through this while loop, our a is going to change. Our uppercase a is going to change. It's going to be equal to this b that it was right here. Then our b is going to change. So it's going to change like this. Uh, this and then this is going to change. So everything is changing every time we run through this while loop. So we can click submit and we can see if it runs. We passed six out of seven tests. And that's because um, I returned a negative four here when we should turn to a four. Very easy fix. All we need to do is a math dot pow. I think we would need to import a math class, but I believe practice it already takes care of that for us. I'm um, sorry, it is not math dot pow. That's not even written correctly. You would need two parameters. It would be math.absolute value, and we pass in our parameter. And this basically makes whatever we pass in the absolute value of it. So instead of negative four, it's going to be four. We've passed all the tests, and that's how we would go coding for this practice it 5.2 greatest common denominator.